Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. Continuing on with more factions of Faerun, let's dive into the Lord's Alliance, also known as the Council of Lords. Founded in 1325 DR, the year of the Great Harvest, it was established in Waterdeep with membership coming from most of the cities and settlements of the Sword Coast North. It was originally founded to help merchants in the North compete with aggression from Am. Am was controlling most of the trade coming from the South, so it was decided by the merchants of the North to increase trade within the North, making it more self-sufficient and taking Am out of the equation. In short, they wanted to unify the defense of Northern cities and promote their economic interests. Started in Waterdeep, the Lord's Alliance includes many cities in the north, Silvery Moon, Baldur's Gate, Mirabar, Neverwinter, and other free cities and towns within the region, particularly formed to increase trade within the north, but also created to oppose the growing influence of the Black Network in the north, as well as the Shadow Thieves of Am. The Black Network being the Zentarum, which we'll get into more next week, the Shadow Thieves is a guild in Athcatlo, which is located in Am. Originally a thieves' guild in Waterdeep, the Lords of Waterdeep routed them out and they moved to Athcatla, making an arrangement with the Council of Six, which is the governing body of Am. The Lord's Alliance and the Zentarum do not get along, and often members of the Lord's Alliance will execute raids against Zentarum strongholds and outposts. The Lord's Alliance strives to keep the trade routes along the Sword Coast as safe as possible, and free from Zentarum influence. Not all cities have decided to join the Alliance. Luskin has remained out of the Alliance as well as southern lands such as Am and Kalimshan, who rightfully so feel troubled about this in-trading with the North only. The cities within the Lord's Alliance communicate through carrier pigeons and magic. They have a military compound of militia from these cities and smaller villages nearby. Large cities not only patrol their own lands, but aid smaller towns and support their local militia to keep the lands safe and the trade routes open. There are complaints from locals in the city that the Lords are wasting money on grubby peasants, but the information coming in from these smaller villages has proven valuable. This creates great feeling of security within the walls of the city, as well as those who pioneer the wilderness. Adventurers are also hired to help with the security and exploration. As of 5th edition, the Lord's Alliance has collectively agreed that evil needs to be kept at bay. Seek out and destroy threats to the homeland is the calling of all agents of the Lord's Alliance. You'll find bards, paladins, mages, and fighters all join the ranks of the Alliance, and often they are decked out too, using quality equipment that was backed by the wealthy and privileged of their respected city. They are highly trained members. They fight for glory and security of their people and the Lords who rule over them. Their beliefs are solid. If civilization is to survive, all must unite against the dark forces that threaten it. Glory comes from protecting one's home, and the best defense is a strong offense. They accomplish these goals by forming a strong coalition against whatever threatens the cities of the north. These threats are to be eliminated whenever they arise. Join the cause and become a champion for your people. Although the Lord's Alliance does a lot of good, in its roots it was created to oppose the Zentarum. Adventurers are hired to raid Zentarum strongholds and scout out their activities. Now the Lord's Alliance is that safety net for the people of the Sword Coast and the North. Despite the leaders and nobles of Faerun having conflicting goals and long-standing rivalries, these can be put aside as they band together to face events that are too big for any one of them to handle. They can pull together when their survival depends on it. Although the poor and common folk do benefit from this alliance, it is important to note that the Lord's Alliance represents the interests of the rich and the most powerful armies of the Sword Coast. Their unspoken goal is to control wealth that can hire mercenaries to ensure loyalty and to bribe whoever else. Even while working together, members of the Lord's Alliance are advancing their own agenda. I mentioned earlier some of the members such as fighters, mages, and paladins. You'll find plenty of these classes in a larger city. You won't often find barbarians, druids, or rangers that join the Lord's Alliance. They just don't fit in with city life and often will join the Emerald Enclave instead, protecting nature and the balance rather than pleasing a nearby lord. This has led to strained relations with the Emerald Enclave. Their worldviews just don't sync up very well. If anything, the Lord's Alliance has taught the the cities of the north that it is better to cooperate than fight. Despite Luskin not joining the alliance, its malicious activities have been kept in check thanks to neighboring cities being part of the alliance. This has also led to stopping threats such as orc hordes and northlander pirates. The Lord's Alliance was one of the factions that joined together to oppose the Cult of the Dragon's plot to release Tiamat, made popular in the Rise of Tiamat adventure. And that's it for today. You really could take this alliance and make an entire game about it. Perhaps there are those trying to do some political intrigue and upset the alliance. It's your job to stop these rumors and weed out the group attempting to destroy it. Left with the question, why would anyone want to destroy the Lord's Alliance and create possible war between these cities? Thanks for watching everyone. If you want more information on the Lord's Alliance, you can click my reference section in the description below, and I'll be back next week with a video on the Zentarum.